Electric Utopia recently copped another unexpected knee. Fair in the twins. Down under. A second fast-charging operation called Charge Point recently raised its middle finger in a solemn salute to Australia and beat itself off, so to speak, back to America. Am I sad to see them depart? Not that much. As your future Prime Minister, I say to Charge Point, be gone, you losers. We need you not. And kindly do not allow the door to strike you on the buttocks as you depart for the final time via the first class weasel lounge. I'm John Canogan from autoexpert.com.au, Newcast cheap, but Australia only website card. Charge Point is going to pull the plug on its 46 Australian fast chargers on February the 1st. You see what I did there? Like, creatively. When green turns to brown, the jokes just write themselves. Dude. Another fast charging company here is also beating itself off, so to speak, to America. This time, they're off to Tennessee. Can you even name it? Like, go on, have a crack, dude. I bet you can't, because it's very hard to make these glorified PowerPoints look sexy. We'll get into that one, too, in a little while, because it seems that instead of building EV chargers, you really could just amass a mountain of money instead and set it on fire. It's the same result. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. Get four extra months of Nord free now at nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Cyber threats are very real and we're all exposed to them every day. But you do not have to be the next victim. You just need countermeasures. And that's what NordVPN does in the background. I don't need to understand it, neither do you. We just want the protection like weapons-grade data encryption, IP address hidden, everything locked down securely. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. Grab the two-year plan at a massive discount, plus you'll get four extra months free. nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. You just subscribe, then you download the app and you connect. One click, your IP address is shielded, your online traffic is masked with NSA-level encryption across as many as six of your devices. Nord is, of course, the fastest VPN on the planet. It costs only about as much as one cup of coffee every month to keep your data, your identity and your devices secure. Your location will be masked and this means you'll be able to access streaming and other services that might be geo-blocked where you live. Plus, you can continue to watch your favourite content when you travel. You might even be able to score great deals on travel and accommodation that are not available to you normally at home. That kind of thing happens all the time. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. Boost your security and enjoy that discount plus those extra four months of free subscription time. It's totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. And thanks to Nord for sponsoring the channel and for helping to make more content like this possible. So ChargePoint recently said... Fuck you, Australia. I'm paraphrasing. They actually said that they would, quote, no longer maintain a presence in Australia. Sounds like me with ex-wives two through five last Christmas when we all traditionally get together. It was time to leave, sadly, and I stood up and respectfully told them that I would no longer maintain a presence in the hot tub. It was emotional. I find that corporate double speak always works best in these sort of emotionally charged, poignant situations. My other website, relationshipexpert.com, for more on all of this. If you've got the Charge Point app, now would be an excellent time to place it in the recycle bin 
because it's no longer maintaining a presence in the domain of functionality. For the next fortnight or so, you can still use a credit card if you are desperate to suck electrons from one of ChargePoint's EV flutes, you know, for old times' sake. ChargePoint installed its very first charger here in Shitsville way back in 2010, which was five incredibly low-rent prime ministerial clowns ago, according to my calendar. They, ChargePoint, not the elected clowns, metastasized up and down the eastern seaboard as the official hand of the fossil fuel industry slipped out of Rudd and went up the back of Gillard and then back into Rudd again briefly. I only counted him once in the five, incidentally. Then Budgie Smuggler Boy became the puppet du jour, followed by that uh, smug, rich twat. Then the religious nut and uh, Mr. Won't Take No for an Answer. And here we are, all caught up. Imagine being Woodside's puppeteer. Very hard to keep up. You'd need a post-it note on the fridge to remind you which PM you'll be slipping it into today, wouldn't you? So complex. If the bullshit green evangelism were actually true, building EV charges and operating them would be a license to print money. But it's not. Delivering the massive amount of electricity required to charge four or five EVs at once is kind of problematic. The wires in the street were never designed for that, so the capital cost is kind of insane. I blame electrophysics for this. People think it's just magic, but of course it's not. ChargePoint has essentially made like a black hole and collapsed. It's based in California, and interestingly enough, their shares reached a high of $46.10, American. That was in late 2020, but they're now worth about two bucks. I suppose someone called the Fire Brigade, apropos of all of that, but we'll never know. 12% of the charge point global workforce has been told to noose up, dude. I think they were actually told that they would, quote, no longer maintain a presence at charge point. No more ex-wife hot tub extravaganza for you, dude. So charge point is kind of dead in the water. Who's next? Tritium, another charger establishment well, based in a Queensland cultural void known as Marari. Tritium began with a rousing chorus of we still call Australia home. But it recently backflipped on that one and declared that its factory here would no longer maintain a presence within a bees endophallus of Marari's World Heritage listed mosquito swamps and venomous reptiles just three days before Christmas. Nice timing for the workers, you tritium cocks. Tritium not the proper noun, just for disambiguation, is of course a rare isotope of hydrogen, most often made in nuclear reactors, by forcing neutrons to sleep with lithium-6 in a seedy container colloquially called a breeder ceramic. Dude, nuclear physicists have the best Christmas parties, just saying. Wonder why. The proper noun one, with its factory in the swamp, that one, has a half-life of about two years before it decays into a related isotope that they call shittium. And we recently ran that experiment. It's quite messy at the very end. The man who is a slightly less shit prime mincer than starchy Voldemort would have been actually visited shittium back in March. You can see them all just standing there with teepees in their trousers, metaphorically, fantasising about endless green tech jobs in electric utopia. It's quite stimulating, gripping a plug that big, knowing that there's a table full of little triangle sandwiches with the crusts cut off for after the press conference. That's how they roll. Shittium is the kind of company that had a nice-sounding idea which just can't be commercialised because Electric Utopia is just a political pipe dream. When the government finally says 
get fucked, no more handouts for you, they close the factory and retreat to Tennessee, where it's much easier indeed to brush up on one's critter skinning skills. The implementation of this plan, including the closure of the Brisbane factory and consolidating our manufacturing operations in Tennessee, supports the ongoing market competitiveness and positioning of the company as a world leader in its category. Okay, so this development is a plan in exactly the same way that fixing bayonets is a plan when you are grossly outnumbered and the enemy is about to overrun your particular trench. Jane Hunter is quoted there. She's Shittium's cheese, which would be, in my estimation, the ultimate corporate number two sandwich right about now. To brave, strong, cheesy Jane, I say, here, here, you go, girl, to Tennessee. As for Shittium being a true leader, if its category is disappearing up one's own watertight anus, then Shittium is certainly one of those true leaders. I say this because before its transition, Tritium listed on the NASDAQ at $2 billion. It's staggering, right? Glorified PowerPoints being made from thin air in a mosquito swamp. Well, they can seem very sexy indeed with the right CGI, I'm sure. This sky-high valuation certainly explains the extra 10 shipping containers of Verve Clicquot being delivered to Marari in 2021. That's 10 shipping containers of that stuff more than usual, I note. They installed a senior executive swimming pool, I expect. Shares went north of 15 bucks. American. That was a couple of years ago now. But then Value decided that it would no longer maintain a presence in the Shittium share registry. And Shittium shares crashed to about, can you guess? 20 cents. They closed at 17 cents earlier this week. What's that? Like a thousand or something like 1200 percent different ballpark. Imagine putting two billion bucks in a dirty big pile and waiting for the inevitable catastrophic thermal runaway. It's been Dresden on the 15th of February 1945 at Shittium for about a year now. Key investor and coal baron Brian Flannery said earlier this month Shittium should have made that decision a year ago. He said he won't be investing any more money with them. It occurs to me that of all the official job descriptions, coal baron is my favourite. It sounds like something you inherit, doesn't it? Like Chancellor of Hotties or Marquis of Topless Beaches. A perfect, let's call it, job. More of a calling, obviously, like being a pimp or a crystal meth cook or something of that nature. That was the Finn review there from a story on November the 9th last year detailing Shittium's onward downward trajectory. Not exactly a resounding vote of confidence from Baron von Greenhouse, was it? This transition is aligned with the company's plan to be profitable in 2024. Be cheesy Jane from Shittium there again with profitability pipe dream predictions, perhaps. Saying it with a straight face to hashtag respect. There's almost certainly the raw sewage stench of desperation emanating from the shitty and boardroom. That always happens when you have to make statements about transitioning. I freaking hate that word. Transitioning to profitability. But it's the sense of entitlement to government support that really sticks in my anus. If you're a tradie, right, or you own a cafe or a restaurant, you're a hairdresser or you're, I don't know, a self-employed fucking journalist, wouldn't it be just lovely if the government got down on its knees and played your flute every time one of your bullshit ideas just fails to make money? Green corporate entitlement is fucking disgraceful, not to mention undignified. 
personal opinion. This is not a transition. It's a panic-struck retreat. Everyone forgot their bayonets. And look around, dude, nobody's wearing trousers. Pro tip, if you ever need to retreat, if possible, wear pants. Making electric car charges is a guaranteed way to make a small fortune, dude. But only if you start with a dirty big fuck off one. How many more experiments like this do we need to see actually running before we accept the underlying shitness of the commercial dynamics in play on this one? Fast charging EVs, like it sounds good, it just slips off the tongue, but in the real world, doing it at scale means delivering bulk electricity, enough for a small freaking town, to the sites doing the charging. This is not a trivial exercise, even in coal fired Australia. Moving on from shittium and charge pointless now. The second largest operator of electric vehicle chargers here, called EV, E-V-I-E, just pumped up its Schittsvillian prices by as much as 43%. It's EV's second price hike in 12 months. This suggests to me that we could be enjoying a hat trick, presence, non-maintenance, anytime soon. If you use an EV 150 kilowatt fast charger today for a road trip in your electric car, the electricity is going to cost roughly double the price of the stuff that you suck out of the wall at home on average. And getting from A to B with it will be even more expensive than the petrol for an equivalent combustion car. For more detail on that, click the the and that on the screen right now. I hate it when you get to nearly the end without gaffing anything. And now here we frickin' are, dude. It's just undignified. Electric Utopia is a scam wrapped in green virtue. It only works if you decline to maintain a presence in the real world, I suppose. Actually reducing environmental impact simply cannot be achieved by buying shiny new shitboxes from car makers and plugging them into vaporware in some shitty car park in the middle of nowhere. Because reality does not work that way.